a wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat interesting discovery that almost makes no sense. A discovery of a kind of a quasi-particle that seems to possess a very bizarre property of only having mass when it moves in a certain direction, because whenever it moves in other directions, it doesn't seem to have any mass, potentially being able to travel at the speed of light. And well, that by itself is kind of mind-blowing. And so let's discuss this recent discovery and this recent study, and basically how all of this was discovered and how this was achieved. But here, well, let's start with a few definitions. Because technically this is based on extremely unusual theoretical predictions. Predictions in regards to what's known as fermions. A type of a subatomic particle that in particle physics follows what's known as Fermi direct statistics. With this diagram right here, basically showing us how fermions differ from bosons and also hadrons. But I guess in more layman terms, fermions are basically your physical matter. Things like electrons, neutrinos, protons, and neutrons. Whereas on the opposite side we have bosons, which are particles that can travel at the speed of light, and here this includes photons, gluons, and bosons like the Higgs boson. And so in some sense you can think of bosons as, I guess, energy or information. But approximately 16 years ago, researchers proposed something that was beyond this scale and something that was a little bit more difficult to define. This was a hypothetical existence of a quasi-particle, referred to as semi-Dirac fermion, naturally named after Paul Dirac, one of the founders of quantum mechanics and a recipient of the Nobel Prize in 1933, who basically came up with an equation that describes behavior of all fermions and even predicts antimatter. And well, as we know today, he was basically right about pretty much everything. But back in 2008-2009, there was an intriguing proposition that maybe something else could be added to his equation, forming so-called semi-Dirac fermions that could have an unusual mass-shifting property depending on the direction of their movement. And so here this would be some kind of a quasi-particle, or maybe even a combination of particles, that could travel in different directions, but in some directions it would appear massless, whereas in other directions it would have some mass. Naturally suggesting that, in theory, these quasi-particles could move at the speed of light if moving in a certain direction, whereas they'd have to move much slower in other directions. And if real, these bizarre quasi-particles would obviously possess a lot of unusual effects, or different physical properties that would even combine quantum effects with classical physics, or essentially a number of very bizarre physical properties that though have been predicted, have not been seen in anything up until now. And so for the past decade and a half, there's been a lot of propositions of where we could maybe discover these bizarre quasi-particles. For example, here's one study from 2017 that predicted maybe this could exist in what's known as silicine oxides. Because here this was assumed to be the result of some kind of an unusual honeycomb structure that could actually make some of the electrons inside these atoms start acting as quasi-particles that would only have mass in certain directions. But this was theoretical and was not confirmed and thus was probably incorrect. As a matter of fact, several studies even proposed that if these quasi-particles were real and existed, maybe the material that could actually exhibit these properties did not exist yet. And while based on this recent study, this proposition might have actually been correct. And so surprisingly, in 2017 as well, a separate study you can find in a description theoretically predicted a somewhat unusual Dirac semi-metal that could technically be grown using a very unusual vapor phase transport method that would combine zirconium, silicon and sulfur in order to create crystals you see right here. And as soon as this unusual material was created, it did turn out to be kind of bizarre. Bizarre because it was able to produce many different quantum effects like superconductivity, but also becoming a Fermi liquid in certain situations. It also contained a crystalline structure and different layers, and in some sense also resembled that honeycomb structure predicted to produce potentially unusual effects. And it's also super expensive. A tiny piece like this costs something like $700. And so for the past 7 years, various studies tried to assess this material, trying to discover if we can use this in some way or if it possesses some bizarre properties. And so in this case, with these materials, we know that when you subject them to super cold conditions, basically near absolute zero, they start to display a lot of bizarre quantum properties that even today are somewhat difficult to understand. And that's precisely what Shao and his team decided to do in this study from December of 2024. They essentially wanted to study what kind of unusual quantum effects they can discover inside of these zirconium silicon sulfide crystals. For example, we know that in many cases, in these conditions, materials become superconductive. 
they can allow the flow of current without any resistance. But in a lot of different semi-metals, sometimes superconductivity is replaced with additional effects, especially when they're exposed to very high magnetic fields. Now normally when you expose any material to the magnetic field, the energy level inside the electrons inside this material basically becomes quantized and can only assume certain energies. Energies that we refer to as Landau levels. And they can only have fixed values, basically resembling a kind of a staircase, with the spacing between these levels being dependent on the mass of the electrons and the overall strength of the field. But usually, when the magnetic field increases, the overall staircase in this case increases as well in a somewhat linear fashion. And this is something that has been observed pretty much everywhere. But in this case, in these zirconium silicon sulfide crystals, these Landau level transitions started to follow an entirely different pattern that at first didn't make a lot of sense. Here's roughly what these levels looked like as reported from the study. With further calculations discovering that there was a point in there, a kind of a crossing point, where all of these levels suddenly made no sense, as if the particles suddenly had no mass. Or basically particles switched from having mass to being massless when they appeared to move in certain directions. And intriguingly, the math behind this seemed to match these semi-direct particles directly. In other words, what this study potentially suggested was that inside of this material, in extremely cold and extremely magnetic conditions, the electrons started to act as a kind of a quasi-particle, and when this quasi-particle was moving perpendicularly, it would suddenly have no mass. But as soon as they start moving in a different direction, they regain this mass right away. And intriguingly, all of this seems to depend directly on the strength of the magnetic field. In other words, the fluctuation mass in this case is the result of the magnetic field and nothing else. And so by using this magneto-optical spectroscopy, they seem to have showed that these unusual zirconium silicon sulfur crystals are able to produce semi-direct fermions, a collection of particles, or quasi-particles, that become completely massless when moving in a certain direction. Although here is a super important side note. This is not an electron moving in a certain direction. This is a collection of electrons acting as a quasi-particle. PBS actually has a really good video about this, basically explaining the difference between the two. You can find this video in the description. But in essence, here's a picture basically summarizing what this might look like. And so here we have a bunch of particles joining together becoming a quasi-particle, which then starts to acquire additional properties. And in this case, it's believed that some of these properties seem to appear because the material is layered. It essentially contains these honeycombs, very similar to graphite, which means that by separating layers inside these zirconium silicon sulfide crystals, there might be a much better way to manipulate this by using just a single layer. Thus allowing us, in theory, to harness the power of these semi-direct fermions, particles that lose their mass when moving in certain direction. But for now this discovery is still very very theoretical and still needs to be confirmed. Moreover, we actually have no idea if this can be used for anything yet, but even if not, it's still actually kind of exciting to see how two things that were predicted theoretically, in this case these quasi-particles and even the material itself, actually ended up being real and even ended up having the effects we assumed they would have. In other words, semi-metals were predicted to have semi-direct properties at some point, with this paper confirming the effects, and the possibility for creating these crystals containing zircon, silicon, and sulfide was predicted as well, and then created back in 2017 implying that our understanding of material sciences, various types of particles, and of course quantum mechanics, is getting better and better every single year. But until someone else discovers something really cool about these unusual quasi-particles, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out all of the links in the description, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.